these are really great problems to see how well you understand the chain rule without a lot of functions um, around it like x squared or e to the minus 5 t squared or whatever. So what I have here are functions p which is this slightly u-shaped function and q which is an n-shaped upside down u-shaped function here. And we're going to answer these questions. Now when I do a problem like this I don't just you know, jump into the first question, I kind of look at what they're doing here overall. So you can see here that they're defining C as a composition of P and Q here. They want to do C prime and C prime of zero and C prime of three. Um, so that means I have to be thinking about what the derivatives of P and Q are based on just this picture. Same thing here, find a value for which C prime does not exist. Uh, that means I'm talking about differentiability of a function. I mean, is there a point on the x-axis where the composition's derivative won't exist? And then here, let y equal this composition. So it's now it's q composed with itself and z q composed with p, which is the reverse of this. And then we're going to find the derivatives. So if we can do a, we probably can do c pretty well. B is, b is interesting. So let's just try this problem out. Now, this is so not enough in, uh, room here to uh, do the work. So I do have to do the work behind here. So the paper probably be moving up and down a little bit. Hopefully you'll be okay. Just put it on pause if it starts to annoy you. <laughs> All right. So the first thing I did when I did this problem is I divided up the interval, the X axis here into intervals where the corners meet. You notice that the corners are at negative one and positive one. And that's where actually the derivatives change because everything's linear here. So I came down and I created a little tiny chart, one for P prime and one for Q prime. So for P prime, the derivative over the interval from minus infinity to minus one, which is this angle here, I look at the slope and I go down to and over one. So that's got a slope of minus two. If I go from minus one to one, that's that slope. You notice I go up one and over two, so that has a slope of one half, which the derivative then for P in that interval is one half. And then if I go from one to infinity, it looks like I go up two and over one. So I have a slope of two, which means that P prime is two over that interval. I'm gonna do the same thing for Q. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where I want to put this. It makes it the most easy. So we'll put it here, Q prime minus infinity to minus one. So let's see, it looks like I go up three and over one. So that's a slope of three, which means the derivative on that interval for Q is three minus one to one. That one's easy. That has a slope of zero. So the derivative along that interval is zero. One to infinity. This has a slope of minus one. So the derivative for Q over the interval minus or one to infinity is minus one. Okay. So we're going to refer to that chart as I do the problems. So let's go. Um, we have to move this up now. We're going to do C of X equals P of Q of X and determine the derivatives at points. Now, before we determine derivatives at points, I have to determine what the derivative of a C at X is. So this is what I'm given. C prime of X using the chain rule is P prime times Q prime with the original Q interior part remaining inside P prime. So now finding C prime of zero should be a little easier. So if I put a zero here, I put a zero here, and I put a zero here, and I just use the chart to follow the instructions. So P prime of Q of zero times Q prime of zero, 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 zero. Work your way from the inside out. Q of zero. So go to your chart, here's zero. Q of zero looks like the output is two. So this is going to be P prime of two times Q prime of zero. 
Always do from the inside and then keep working out. Now if I use my chart, P prime at 2, 2 falls in this interval, so my derivative will be 2. Q prime of 0, 0 is this interval, so my derivative is 0. So in the end, that derivative turns out to be 0. Now I'm going to keep doing that with uh, C prime of 3. So C prime of 3 equals P prime of Q of 3 times Q prime of 3. So let's start with the interior, Q of 3. So here's Q, here's 3. So Q of 3 is 0. Don't make any assumptions, you just know that Q of 3 is 0. So P prime of 0 is what we need there times Q prime of 3. Again, try not to anticipate what might happen. Follow the directions that the problem is telling you and move forward. So using my chart again, P prime of 0, 0 is in this interval, so the derivative is 1 half. So P prime of 0 is 1 half. 3 falls in this interval for Q prime, so my derivative is minus 1. So Q prime of 3 is minus 1, so my derivative turns out to be minus 1 half. Okay. Now part B, we want to find a value of x for which C prime does not exist. Now I conjecture that at minus 1 it's not going to exist and at 1 it's not going to exist. So let's just test one of them out and I'll leave you to test the other one. So find a value for x. So x equals 1 C prime of x does not exist. That's my conjecture, okay? Make sure that get stays separate. So how do I test that? Well, I know that this is C prime right here. So let's put in one in for X. C prime of one equals P prime of Q of one times Q prime of one. All right, Q of one. All right, so Q, here's Q of one is two, all right? So P prime of two times Q prime of one. P prime of two is two and Q prime of one. Well, notice I used round brackets here. So these endpoints aren't included. And I did that on purpose because the derivatives of each of these corners don't exist. So Q prime at one, well, Q isn't, oh, I'm sorry, Q prime one, there we go up here. Q prime of one, it's not differentiable there because there's a corner. As I approach from this direction, the derivative is zero. As I approach from this direction, the derivative is, is uh, one or minus one. And there is an abrupt change there. So I know that Q is not differentiable at one. So since Q is not differentiable at one, this becomes two times something that doesn't exist. Therefore, C prime of one does not exist. Right. Now you can go through using X equal minus one to prove it to yourself. The question simply asked, find a value of X. I believe that X equals one and X equal minus one are both possible values. Now the last question here, let Y of X equal Q of Q of X and Z of X equals Q of P of X. So we're going to determine y prime of 2 and z prime of 0. Okay, so let's go down to the bottom here and let's work on it. All right, I know this isn't the neatest thing here, but it's pretty obvious what's happening if I put the little boxes there. So let's start with y of x. No, not y of 0, y of x which is Q of Q of X. Now don't let the double Q throw you. Just utilize what you know and keep using that. So Y prime of X using the chain rule is the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function with the original inside function over there. Now I'm supposed to find Y prime of two. So it's going to be Q prime of Q of two times Q prime of two. 
So Q of two, I'm gonna go back up to my graph. Q of two looks like it's one. Q of two is one. Q prime of one. Well, Q prime of one, again, that's a place here where, I mean, it doesn't, derivative doesn't exist there. So if I go to one, see if you look at the corner, just like I talked in the previous example, there's no derivative there. So then I can conclude immediately that this is, this derivative doesn't exist times whatever number this is. Well, that, that doesn't matter. Basically here, the derivative does not exist. So y prime of two is non-existent. Then the last one will be z. So z of x is defined as q of p of x. Using the chain rule, z prime of x equals q prime times p prime with the original interior in Q prime. They're asking for Z prime of zero. So Q prime of P of zero times P prime of zero. Zero, 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 zero. Now we want P of zero. Again, don't anticipate, don't try to remember, always reference. P of zero. This is a graph of P, P of zero looks like it's minus one half. So this is going to be Q prime of minus one half times P prime of zero. Now we're gonna go back up to here. So we need Q prime of minus one half. Now minus one half is in this interval, so the derivative will be zero. And then P prime of zero Looks like zero falls in that interval, so I get one half. So that leaves me a derivative of zero. So that was uh, a 12 minute problem, but there's a lot of exercises here. So just pause and you know make sure you understand what's happening here. And look at the graph and the chart, take some notes and take your time and make no assumptions. Just follow what you're asked to do.